Okay. The adding, subtracting radicals. This, this, this is much more difficult, and it requires you to simplify the radicals first. And we didn't get to spend as much time doing that as I would have liked. But now look, the only way you can add these together is they have the same radical part. If you see a radical seven here, you are definitely going to write this with a radical seven. And it needs to be another number that's on this list. The only way you can write 28, I mean, you can say, oh, 14 and two. This doesn't make sense. You have to pick a number on the list of perfect squares and it has to have seven. So the only way that you could possibly do that would be to write radical four times radical seven. Now, this is where quite a few of you were either skipping steps or you know, writing some weird stuff down. Where the radical four is, remember, this is like a jail. You wanna take him out of jail. Take him out of the jail. Release him. Radical seven just goes along for the ride. And then you have the three radical seven waiting to hook up. Now I wanna see five times two. I wanna see 10 radical seven here. You cannot skip this is an important step. Every step here is an important part of the process. You can't skip any of them. You need them all there. Don't write anything weird. Radical four, two, one, two. Now 10 radical sevens and three radical sevens is 13 radical sevens. You know, this, this was supposed to be the easy one. So they're gonna get progressively harder as we go and then I'll show you how to break them down. Okay, problem number two. Now again, you wanna look right here. I have an 11. This radical needs to be written so that it has an 11 in it so that I can combine them together or it's not gonna work. Now, again, you look at the list, 99 divided by 11. <laughs> Can use this if you need to. 99 divided by 11 is nine. So 99 is nine times 11. This is the pair that you must choose. Now, if it helps you put a one in front of this, right? There's an invisible one there. You're gonna write it. I'm gonna use it when I do the subtraction. Now I have to take him out of jail. He's a perfect square. One, two, three. Three squared is nine. So the opposite, right? You have to take him out of jail. When you free him, you get three. Don't write, you know, some of you, some people write weird things. Don't get cute with this. Don't put radical three, radical three. That's not what it is. Radical nine is three. It's not radical three. It's not radical three, radical three. It's just three. So you take it out of the jail. I'm gonna leave my one in front of the other one. Now, once you free the radical nine and get the three, you have to do four times three to make 12. So you have a 12 radical 11, oops. And you're subtracting one radical 11. 12 radical 11s minus one of them leaves you with 11. Now I remember what I said in class about this weirdness that bothers me. I don't like that it's 11, 11, <laughs> it annoys the hell out of me. If you were doing this on an exam, I would have had this answer come out to like a nine or a seven. I don't like that it was 11, 11, but it is what it is, that's the answer. All right, question three, this is the first one where it's not, it may not be obvious how to split them up, especially 300, because the thing is you can, you can write 300 as 75 times four. And then you're like, oh, they both have 75. But in this case, I'm actually gonna start with, with the 75. Now, again, you need, you need a number on this list that divides evenly into 75. I mean, look, obviously you can't divide this by 64 or 49, and you know, again, do it on the calculator. 75 is not divisible by 36, but 75 is certainly divisible by 25. You get 25 and three. As soon as I see this three, I know that I have to write this one with a three. So, you know, if it's not obvious, take 300 and do 300 divided by three would help if I actually put that in the calculator. You can see it there. If you need to, you know, you guys are not idiots. You can, you can do 300 divided by three in your head. But this, this is the pair you want to pick. I need the same radical part in order to combine them together. So break 75 down first into 25 and three. Now that I know that this one needs to be a three, I just do 103. The square root of 100 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10. What number times itself makes 100? Now, what number times itself makes 25? One, two, three, four, five. That's why it helps to have the list there, right? Free them from jail. Perfect square, take them out. Perfect square, take them out. They get released from jail. Now, he didn't have anyone waiting for him outside of jail, so he's all alone. But he had his buddy waiting for him outside of the jail. Two times five is 10. It's important. Show me this. I have to see this step. Let me put on my equals. So you have 10 radical threes, and I give you 10 more. Now you have 20 radical threes. It does bug me that I got a 10 here and a 10 here, but nah, whatever. It's right. So again, once you break one down and you say, oh, but I use, is, is it wrong if I use four and 75? It's not wrong, but 75 breaks down more. You know, there's a lot of ways you can write 300, right? I mean, you could use 50 and six. I mean, it's just, it, you have to pick the, the smart pair that lets you do it on the first try. So here it was 25 and three, and here it was 103. I broke this one down first, so I understood not to use four and 75. That's not the most efficient pair. You always wanna try breaking down the smaller one first, and that helps you figure out the other pair. All right. All right, number four, 72, 128. So again, I wanna start dividing. Take 72. Divide it by 64, doesn't work. Take 72, divide it by 49, doesn't work. Take 72, divide it by 36. It works. So again, start high and work your way down. 72 is 36 times two. Now, I know almost all of you pick nine and eight. But is that wrong? I mean, I should say, yes, it's wrong. <laughs> because you'll do it otherwise, but it's not wrong. It's not the right pair. You pick the wrong pair. You pick too small. Nine and eight, no good. You want to pick 36 and two. Now, can you get the right answer with nine and eight? Sure. Then you have to do a bunch more steps. Eight is radical four and radical two. It breaks down more. So you don't want to pick nine and eight. Why? Because there's a better pair. There's a bigger pair that's easier. Now, as soon as I see this two, I know that 72 is 36 times two. I want to use that to help me do 128. I need a two here. So just take 128 and cut it in half. And if you can't do it in your head, that's what the damn calculator is for. It's 64 times two. And yes, 128 breaks down in a bunch of ridiculously stupid ways. <laughs> Don't do that. If you can do 64 and two, one step. 36 and two, 64 and two. Now, 36 is a perfect square. One, two, three, four, five, six. What times itself is 36? It's six. And he's got no one outside waiting for him. Over here, 64. What times itself is 64? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be four times eight, radical two. Now, multiply the numbers on the outside of the jail. So you get negative 32 radical two. They both have the same radical part that does not break down more. So now I just have to do six minus 32. You get negative 26. You can't have a negative. You can't have a negative on the inside, which is false. You can, but we'll do it later. Negative on the outside is fine. Who cares? The answer is negative 26 radical two. But again, the choice in the beginning of how to break them down is critical. You must use the same number you don't want to break this down with nine and eight. And then you try to write this one with an eight. Don't do this. You, you got to take them as small. If you, eight is a number that breaks down more. If you're writing nine and eight, you've already made a bad choice because eight breaks down further. So why would you pick a number that's going to break down more? So the correct, the proper pairs, the best choice was 36 and two and 64 and two. All right, I decided to do a bonus one, number five, even though you didn't turn this one in class. Now, you have a 20, an 80, and a 45. 
Now, look, certainly what, what some people do immediately is they see the 80 and they go four and 20 and say, oh, 20 and 20, I made them the same. But <laughs> that wouldn't work with that one. And even if you could do that, you know, fine, you write 80 with four and 20. But 20 breaks down more. 20 breaks down to four and five. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to start with 20 first. 20 is four, four times five. All right, this should be very obvious to you, right? The only number on this list that divides evenly into 20, it's not 16, it's not nine, it's four. So it's four and five. As soon as I see five, I'm going to divide these numbers by five. 80 is going to be something times five. And 45 is going to be something times five. You immediately, as soon as you know one of the radical parts is a five, they're all going to be five. So now look, 45 divided by five, I hope it's obvious it's nine. You might not be able to do 80 divided by five in your head. There you go. Do that. It's 16. Four times five, 20. 16 times five, 80. Nine times five, 45. The same radical part. Now take the numbers that are perfect squares and take them out of jail. Free them from jail. Four comes out as a two. There's a two waiting for it. 16 comes out of jail as a four. There's a three waiting for him. And nine comes out of jail as a three. There's a five waiting for him. Show this step, this important. Show that they got freed from jail. Take them out. They got to come out. You got to show it. Now two times two is four. They're outside jail. Five, my poor five, stuck in prison. He doesn't get out. Three times four is 12. Again, five, stuck in jail. Five times three, outside. Radical five. Now just add it all up. Four and 15, right? This is a plus. Four plus 15 is 19. 19 take away 12 is seven. Yay. I mean, you can subtract these first and get negative eight and then negative eight plus 15. It's the same damn thing, but I like to add my positives together first. So again, the key to that whole question is recognizing which number divides them all. And five is the one. Break down the smaller one first and use his radical part that's left over, right? Five doesn't break down more. Use that to help you figure out how to break the other ones down. All right, this is always the strategy. What's the pair? So you always start with the small, it's always easy to break the smaller number down. So start with the smaller number, break it down first. And then when you see what radical part will be left, that's the one to use for all the other ones. All right, so practice this if you had trouble. I know it's hard, but eventually you'll get it.